Good morning, everyone. This is Steve Larson, and you're listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. you guys how's it going you know it's been a little while since I've uh, recorded a podcast things have been so busy so busy I'm actually driving over to um, our brand new office and um, we got a really cool event going on we got most of Russell's inner circle over here and uh, we're gonna go for the next three days through some cool material to help them launch um, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it yet. <laughs> How's that for a cliffhanger? <laughs> if you guys go to Funnel Hacking Live, you'll find out more about what it is. Um, but you guys are you guys are gonna like it. It's really really cool. So I, mean, I don't I don't see anyone else doing what what we're doing here. So anyway, hey, it's been a while since I've uh, done a podcast, and again, I, I just want to apologize for that. I always try and and do at least two of them a week. That's my goal, and uh, I always try and do it with an awesome microphone, you know. And, and just like the last one I did. Man, guys, I'm in the car again, so <laughs> sorry about that. I'm obsessed with uh, the sound quality, like I said before, but but uh, whatever. The message today, I think, is kind of cool. Um, uh, it was, I think it was, uh, it was only like two weeks ago, so I've been traveling a lot, and we're going all over the place, and we're switching offices, so I haven't really had a chance to sit down with uh, my microphone and actually do a, an actual podcast. Um, just barely, you know, got, uh, we got our security cards to go into the new building. We got all this stuff. So for a long time, I couldn't get to my stuff is what I'm saying. I couldn't get to my equipment and actually do a podcast for you guys. So anyway, it's enough uh, blabbering on that. But, um, it was about a couple weeks ago. I was flying back. I was in, I was in Vegas, um, uh, on a trip for Russell and I don't even know like how to talk about this. I, I was, uh, I was feeling kind of down on myself for, you know, I'll, I'll admit, I was feeling a little bit down. I was like, crap, like there's all these things that I, I want, I, I wish I had up and running. There's all these things that I, that I wish I had uh, going and, and, and um, um, you know, I have, I have like six sales funnels right now that are at the 90% level. I just got to spend another couple extra hours on each of them to get them launched. And, and I know a lot of you guys are going to hear that and you'll be surprised by that and go, wait a second, like, this is all you do. Like, yes, but for other people, you know, and I have a lot of my own funnels already running and make great, fantastic money. Um, they're totally on autopilot and I absolutely love it. But you know, I, I, I guess this is just a, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I was feeling down on myself. I was like, oh crap. Like I just wish that there were these few other things going like, it must be because I have to push harder. It must be because I have to, you know, do this or do that. And I was looking on a lot of external things and I was walking through the airport thinking about this. And, and that's kind of my nature, to be honest, is I'm, I'm naturally hard on myself, not in like the bad way, but in the incredibly self-motivating way, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be where I am, you know, and same with a lot of you guys who listen to this podcast. Um, but, uh, so I was walking through the airport and I was, I was listening to some cool audio books and I was like, all right, like gearing up. Okay. Okay. Here it comes. And I'm feeling the stress. And some guy taught me a long time ago that when you start to feel stress, it's actually your body preparing to be able to do what you're thinking about doing. So don't, don't always push off stress. Stress can be a good thing, right? There's good stress and bad stress. And I think I've talked about that before. Like welcome the stress, you know, your body's prepping to go handle and take on whatever challenge you're thinking about. And so I was walking through the airport and I was feeling this and I was thinking this and, and I was in my own world, man. It was, I felt like I was one of those, you know, like the horses with the, the eye blinders on. I was looking right kind of, I wasn't looking at the ground, but, um, I was kind of looking, you know, like right in front of me. I was, I was just pacing. My flight didn't take off for a few more hours. I got there kind of early, and um, and and I uh, uh, kind of came up to the spot where, you know, there was tons of terminals all over the place. Uh, meaning it was, it was almost like a, the equivalent of a cul-de-sac, you know. <laughs> there was uh, terminals kind of in this huge ring, and, and the people sitting. It was, it was massive. People everywhere. And I was walking and all of a sudden I hear this this thud, the boom. And I hear this sliding sound and this pair of sunglasses comes flying in front of me and, and they, they land and stop about right right in front of me where I am. And, 
it kind of caught me off guard. And I looked down and I looked over at, at the thud. And there was an old gentleman um, who had passed out uh, laying on his back um, in the middle of the terminal. And uh, um, it, it kind of, and we, a lot of us heard it. And he was like maybe 10 feet from me. And uh, <clears throat> his wife was standing right there. And she turns around and she notices him. And she goes, I can't remember what she, I can't remember the name, but she was calling his name and are you okay? Are you okay? Hello? Oh my gosh. You know, she starts freaking out and, uh, understandably. And, um, I mean, I just kind of walked over to him and, and his eyes were, were wide open and he was laying down, um, on the floor and I'm not trying to get gruesome, but I just want you to kind of feel what I felt. There was a little bit of blood coming from his head and, uh, and, he wasn't breathing and his tongue was kind of out a little bit and he 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 basically I don't know if it's a seizure or stroke but all of a sudden we realized like there were no paramedics around and we were gonna have to <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have to try and like save this guy and some guy was like and, and I'm not gonna lie I was in shock and I was in such a stupor because of what I was previously thinking about and thinking about all this stuff, these other things, and I was like, I wish I had this going, wish I had this going, wish I had this going. I was in such a stupor that it, it shocked me that that situation was in front of me right there, right then. I was not able to even really react the way that I would be able to. I mean, we, we train for this stuff all the time. I'm in the army. <laughs> I mean, we we train for that kind of crap all the time, and. And this other guy just like snapped right into gear and he went and he got a defibrillator and we were like shocking his heart while he's on the floor. And I was yelling at uh, a lady with a radio saying like, get people over here. And another lady was grabbing him and a guy started doing CPR on him. And it was really intense. And we, I mean, he, we went probably like five minutes without him actually breathing. And also we saw his chest rise just a little bit on his own and everyone clapped in the whole terminal. We were all cheering and stuff. And I mean, it was really heavy. And I don't even know, but that was the only breath I saw him take. And I think like the paramedics came in and, and but it, I mean, it took him forever. I wanted to yell at him. I saw him coming down the, down the terminal and they were walking and I was, oh, oh my gosh, that pissed me off so much. I was like, you guys, I, I'm, oh, I'm pretty sure the guy died, and and his wife was right there, screaming, and it was it was an awful experience. And I remember I had to get to my plane. I mean, we were there a while. I had to get to my plane and just get on the plane, it, like nothing. I mean, <laughs> it was a crazy experience, and I and I know that a lot of us have experienced those types of things in our life, and I was. This happened several weeks ago, and I've been trying to figure out how to actually, because I knew when it happened, I was like, this was a huge lesson to me. A huge lesson to me. You guys, <laughs> I know I get a lot of messages from you guys, right? And I said in the last podcast, I'm about 400 messages behind, and uh, I've been able to whittle them down, so I'm about half that now, but, but uh, a lot of you guys ask the same kinds of questions that I was having, and, and uh and I was just thinking like, man, I hope I'm not the kind of influence that is helping my audience to not complain, but make sure that we got gratitude for what we're doing. There has never been a time where entrepreneurship is this freaking easy, right? I mean, yesterday I was talking to a group of guys. We were, um, uh, they're a group of buddies of mine. And they're like, dude, what do you do? <laughs> and I know that a lot of you guys have had that question before also. What do you do? And, and you got to sit there and you got to try and explain what it is. And it's hard to explain what it is. And, and entrepreneurship, the type that we do, can be a little bit lonely because it's such a new thing. Uh, sales funnels themselves are not, but the way that we pull them off, it's very new. A lot of people don't know what it is. A lot of people have no idea. You're like, you got to compare it to stuff. You're like, hey, you know, like Amazon, you go buy stuff. They say, other people have enjoyed this product. Do you want it too? And check the box. It's like, it's kind of like that. Um, right? This is not a, a, a normal facet for entrepreneurship at all. And um, anyway, such a cool time to be alive and such a cool time to be and I, I, I am constantly grateful for what I'm, we are doing, but it was amazing how stark of a lesson it was to me that uh, 
I mean, we got a lot of cool crap going on in this world, you guys. I mean, you, there's, it's amazing. I was talking to that group of guys, as I was saying yesterday, they're like, what do you do, what do you do? And I started explaining to them, they're like, wait a second, so you're saying that you go create the product or have somebody else create the product, somebody else fulfills on it, somebody else drives the traffic for it, Somebody else, like, you know, you get the point. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. And I said, yes, that's the point, you guys. The point is we are living in a time where entrepreneurs do not have to be the ones doing all stuff, especially now that click funnels exist. We don't have to worry about the tech side anymore. Literally, all we have to worry about is the marketing side. You know, you can obsess over what your pages look like. You can obsess over certain things. But honestly, man, you can test products and offers so freaking quick. It is amazing. And so... Anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to say in this. I, I hope what I'm trying to say is coming across clearly that, that uh, man, you don't know when life's going to end, you know? You don't know. And when we got the coolest life on the planet. Um, I mean, we're so, so lucky. We are lucky amongst entrepreneurs themselves, and many people count entrepreneurs as a whole to be lucky. And uh, uh, for us to be doing what we are with ClickFunnels, uh, for what you're doing with your own sales funnel, um, the speed that you can test things, the speeds, I mean, it's oh, absolutely incredible. I just found out, um, I think from the number, it was yes, yesterday, I don't know, the last few days have blended together, so I don't really remember, <laughs> but as recently, uh, we found out that, that ClickFunnels has produced 100 millionaires. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh my gosh, 100 millionaires, and we just barely hit 30,000 users See, so think what the ratio is there. I mean, that ratio doesn't exist in MLMs. It doesn't exist in... I mean, it's amazing. Absolutely incredible um, uh, what it's done for people. And uh, a cool place and time that we get to live in. And, and when I watched that guy, I, I'm pretty sure that he, he passed away um, in front of us. Um, he, yeah. I mean, this whole skin tone changed. And I mean, it, it looked very much like he he didn't make it and it's very sad you know to, to be watching that and it just I mean it threw me back to reality that holy crap like you know just grab the loved ones and uh, keep them close realize that uh, uh, you got it pretty freaking good <laughs> okay you got it good we all got it really really good and it's exciting to be where we are and I love all the cool messages I'm getting from you guys I don't I love that uh, we got an awesome community just on this podcast itself. It's a very exciting time to be in, very exciting place to be in, and uh, um, uh, I'm excited for your guys' success for the reason that you can go spend more time with family and do the things that you want to do. It's, the point is not to be a workaholic, you know what I mean? Um, it is to, uh, uh, I mean, the whole reason I started doing this entrepreneurship thing was so I could pay for some extra, uh, pay for some uh, um uh, extra things, you know, pay some bills. And, uh, I thought, gosh, if I could just make like a hundred extra dollars, you know, this week, a hundred extra dollars a year. And it's amazing how small that, <laughs> that is, uh, now, you know, to me, it's, that's extremely tiny. Um, uh, and then it keeps on growing, it keeps on growing, it keeps on growing. And pretty soon our attention can start to turn away to other things. But anyway, I know this is a shorter podcast, but I was just thinking about, like, take take whatever lessons are coming to your head for yourself. I've been struggling to know how to put this in the podcast respectfully, but then also what the stark reality and lesson that it brought to me and, and what that is. Um, crazy grateful to be alive at this time. Like, <laughs> my wife and I are talking like, man, you imagine, I, I don't even know what I'd be doing if it was like pioneer times, you know? I imagine I'd be farming. I like the outdoors, but... Uh, like beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know what that looks like, and it's just really, really awesome. So, anyways, anyway, I want you guys to know that uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, you guys already know that, but uh, personally, definitely appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, look forward to continuing to meet a lot of you guys, especially over the next couple weeks here at our different events that are going on. Um, and very, very excited. Um, um, to see the successes you guys are having. We've got a lot of cool messages lately where risks are taken, appropriate risk, but then huge rewards uh, that are coming as well. And I want you guys to go do that. Take those risks, 
that are calculated. <laughs> um, keep producing cool stuff and pumping value into the world. It's a different kind of mindset for an entrepreneur. Um, the, the conference that I was at is very much not about that. It's very much a, a take, 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 take. This is how you make a ton of money and screw a lot of people. That's what the conference feeling was kind of about. And I was like, man, this is not our culture as a community. And I'm really, really, really grateful. Um, anyway, you guys are awesome. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Want to get one of today's best internet sales funnel for free? Go to salesfunnelbroker.com slash free funnels to download your pre-built sales funnel today.